Hi, everybody. Dr. Stu Hoffman, president of Secure, back with you again today with a special presentation. I met Sherry at the California Chiropractic Association annual convention this last weekend, and she was sharing with me about great news getting into Forbes magazine and the Becker Review. She's going to tell us all about this, but I also want you to know that it's all about starting backward because for most of you, you remember that less than a year ago, Forbes came out with a scathing article on chiropractors. And Sherry's going to share a little bit from that point forward to see what's happened since. Everything, it takes a first step. Unfortunately, sometimes steps are forward and sometimes steps are backwards. So I want to bring up some negative press that we all saw recently, and that was in Forbes. We saw that Steven Selzberg was a very negative uh, host of Medicare data revealing 564 million on chiropractors and osteopathic manipulation. When we have negative press, we have to look at how do we build off of that opportunity to provide more benefit and more opportunities for success. And really that gets to the next spot, which is we need to get our voice out there. And Forbes is an extraordinarily powerful force in the media. And that's the Forbes right now, the dark side of remote work for nonprofits was our release that went out on Friday. Mm -hmm. And the foundation, as you can see in this slide, is the hoster the first time in Forbes to be able to really brand chiropractic as the expert? This particular article is great for everyone. Uh, we put nonprofits in because we were trying to develop relationships with greater nonprofits, and I'm part of the leadership council for the nonprofits. And we have to start somewhere and build from there. So the dark side of remote for non remote work for nonprofits, you could share this with every single one of your patients and they would appreciate it. Because essentially what it's talking about is we have a 140% increase in the work at home since 2005. And when you look at what happens when you're working at home is so often we put ourselves actually at risk we just don't know we're at risk. And I'm trying to bring forth that the dark side of working at home can be that we're actually putting our neuromusculoskeletal system at risk for injury and impairment. The statistics show that approximately 4 million workers are working at home, either on a part-time up to a full-time basis. But let's be realistic, all of us are working from home now. We're all taking our work home with us, whether it be our, our soap notes or the reports that we need to write or we're just doing email. So work is a relative thing. We're all doing something at home that involves the computer and the situation that we're at. And that's why I wanted to improve the ergonomic setting, talking to our consumers about what does it really take to be successful at home doing a, a desk uh, job and we put together some very simple things that every chiropractor should be talking to their um, individual <coughs> patients with you know looking at you know, a supportive chair trying to get maybe considering a sit-stand desk looking at avoiding distracting locations uh, light we don't think about light but when your light in a room is poor you're straining and that eye strain can create, create headaches it can create neck strain, the forward head posture that we're always talking about. And then, you know, where's the screen? Is it arm length away or is it closer or farther away? We sit on the couch, a lot of us. We actually don't even sit at a desk. We're in a squishy couch and we love it. That can put us at risk. So we want our doctors of chiropractic to use this article, get it out to all of your patients to say, it's not just about working from home, it's about really setting up yourself for success so you don't suffer with neck and back pain. In fact, the, the labor force showcased a 51% of teleworkers actually have some degree or form of injury or discomfort in their shoulders, their wrists, their neck, or their back pain. So that's the reason why I really encourage all of you that are, that are out there if we want to hit the 70 million unique viewers on Forbes.com monthly, 
we need to start with getting and sharing our material because when our consumers see it and Forbes consumers see it, then we can start saying that we are actually the expert in neuromusculoskeletal pain prevention first and then treatment to, um, to move forward. Okay, so Sherry, uh, yes. let's stay on that for one minute. Sure. Uh, I, I want to talk about the article itself because I think that there's going to be a, quite a bit of uh, misunderstanding as to what the real intent is. The things that you described, that's great. I read the entire article. There's two things that are important to me about it. Number one, it is not a chiropractic article. And people have to understand that if you think that this is a chiropractic article that was put in Forbes magazine, uh, you'd be mistaken and big time disappointed. I don't think that was the intention or purpose. There is only two places that chiropractic is even mentioned in the article. One is behind Sherry's name and the other as one of the recommendations uh, about reducing stress and chronic pain, right along with massage and acupuncture and reflexology. This is not a chiropractic article. It is an article on a particular topic that you were able to softly work your way into Forbes magazine, into the 70 million uh, subscribers, to at least as a chiropractor be in there with an article that at least mentions chiropractic in a positive view. Is that the correct way to look at it? You're absolutely right, Stu. In fact, when you start looking at how to, if you come straight forward and just start up talking about the benefits of chiropractic as a whole, you sound like a salesperson. And that's not our job. Our foundation job is to promote positive press for chiropractic within a community voice on Forbes and start developing us as the experts and talk about these other things. But we're not all about self-serving and we can't be if we want to be part of a community. It, it, there's there's no, no greater weakness is to stand up and talk all about you. This is all about me, all about me, all about me. People turn off to that. What they really want to know is how do I protect myself, my family and my community from problems like opioids, from bad ergonomic situations from poor posture. So we have to start the ball rolling and think about the entire community and what they need as a whole. So you're absolutely right. This is a really important aspect to getting a hold of information that the community can use and not look like we're just self-serving, but we're developing a conversation where we never had that opportunity before. In fact, when we did have that negative press, we had no voice at all. And now we're trying to build that voice up to share with the community, build their trust in what we're saying. And people can come to link into our site because it'll say, you know, the Foundation for Chiropractic Progress. Maybe they want to find a doctor. Maybe they want more information. And that's the way to do it. And, and I totally agree. The reason that I bring this up is because I know that there are so many haters out there. Let's just be real. Uh, and a lot of the people that will look at it will say, this is what the foundation did. This has nothing to do with promoting chiropractic in the marketplace to the public or anywhere else. And, you know, they're right. But what I think a lot of people miss out on is that you, and it, I know it was you specifically, went to Forbes who had such a negative uh, attack on this profession and basically neutralized 70 million subscribers uh, from having more, hopefully, future negative attacks to now working your way in with a soft article. I call it a soft article uh, to at least mention us in a positive light. And that gives us I'm hopeful, as I know you are, because we discussed this, uh, I'm hopeful that this is the entrance into the conversation with a group like Forbes and maybe many others to come that will allow more and more mention of chiropractic, more mention of chiropractic as an option 
for the opioid epidemic, because I know you've worked on that, but it's one step at a time. It's not like any of you that are watching this ever got into Forbes magazine to write a chiropractic article. So let's hopefully not be haters. Let's celebrate what we at least have. It's a massive, massive accomplishment to have made it in as a chiropractor at all. And it does say Sherry McAllister, DC. It says the Foundation for Chiropractic Progress, and it does include chiropractic uh, as one of the modalities uh, that is a positive option for people. So I, I just thought that it's important to go through that because I think that, you know, one of the things that we want to see happen together is after this show, we want everybody to go and look at that article on there. We also want all of the doctors to get their patients to click on and see the article, because if we get Forbes to see that these articles are getting a lot of play, they're going to give more and more attention to what Sherry and the foundation is able to put out and put in an article. So let's not be standing on the sidelines and criticizing Let's get in the game and help the foundation take this first step and, and make it explosive so that we can make a real impact in a, a, a publication like Forbes, which is massive. Stu, that's very well said. And I, very, I really appreciate that aspect of it is consumers need to see the value of, of different options, bringing chiropractic into that massive media market and neutralizing some of the negative where we were never in this before and having them open up the doors to us so that we can explore and expand and really deliver the quality of information that they need so that they're not, they're not getting the negative and often actually very inaccurate account of what chiropractic is. And that's, that's one of the, the key pieces. I, I have another slide where I think your audience will very much enjoy is um, we move well, not just Sherry, to I, I just wanted to add sure. one last piece to that. You know, everybody that knows me and Cairo Secure uh, knows that we're always approaching the stroke issue. And the reason we have to approach the stroke issue is because of all of the negative press that comes out uh, of trying to link the chiropractor to a dissection leading to stroke. And what my hopes are is not just the fact of getting positive press that mentions chiropractic out into the public. Uh, that's one aspect for me personally. But if you are a trusted voice to a publication like Forbes, who are they going to go to for responses the next time something negative shows up? And I'm hoping that it's you because the value that that relationship has is almost as important as the words that are in an article that most people don't read in the first place. So let's start thinking bigger and let's look at this bigger picture of what this one simple article, and I don't want to belittle it. Uh, I'm just saying it's one simple article in a massive publication uh, that happens to, rather than be negative, mention chiropractic just a little bit in a positive way with some really good information. And I, I want to get as many people as we can to invest themselves into this so that we can move forward together. Please go on. I, I just wanted to get that point out. I, I appreciate that point, and I think everybody in your audience can definitely help their consumers be better at their ergonomic workstation. And I think as a group of chiropractors serving the community, it's patient-centered. We all know that the media is not always been friendly, but things are slowly starting to change. And if you're patient, and I think we can all work this together, is we become a unified team of warriors for healthcare that the world has never seen before because we've never had opportunities like this before. So it's, it is very exciting. That's the, commu the com um, consumer aspect of it. And then I think what's really nice to see 
is the articles and research papers that are coming out that support chiropractic care. And Becker's Spine Review has now opened the door for us on the same day as Forbes opened the door and said, we'd like to know more about what chiropractic is doing in a collaborative care environment. And here, another great moment for us to go into the healthcare community, talk to the nurse practitioners, the emergency room doctors, those that are really looking at how do I help a patient with neck pain and they're sitting in my dental seat right now, those dentists need our information and how do we collaborate? And I think when we pick up the spine review article that you see on the, the top page, there's several different areas where our collaboration is making a huge difference. Um, I looked at, in putting this article together, I wanted it to be as, as current as possible. So one of the pieces that we used was really as current as July of this year. And it was the chiropractic integration into private sector medical facilities and it was a qualitative case study. And it was through the Journal of Alternative and Complementary Medicine. And basically it, it was a, the largest, in fact, um, one of the largest research papers um, looking at how DCs are utilizing evidence-based approach to pain care and collaborating within a multidisciplinary team, showcasing that we're not only uh, having very positive patient satisfaction, which all of us know, but we're having a cost-effective and a greater productivity for their um, for the providers in that group. Um, the second article, um, my apologies, the first the first one was um, not the largest. It was this article through the Open Network on the Journal of American Medical Association. This one is the effect of usual medical care plus chiropractic care versus usual medical care alone. And this study was actually the largest randomized clinical trial in chiropractic research in the United States to date. And it's really important that in Becker's spine review, we're talking to neurosurgeons, orthopedists, um, neurologists, all sorts of spine care individuals that really have invested interest in knowing more about what's going on in their community. And this opportunity where we showcase and, and really develop the collaboration that chiropractic manipulation when integrated with medical care is making. And the report actually showed that disability compared with those who did not receive chiropractic care um, showed outstanding results and there was improvement. So you need to read the research and, and showcasing something like this in Becker's Spine Review you're not just promoting your own chiropractic research, which is always great, but you're promoting it in a different venue that I think a lot of different physicians will be able to say, oh, I didn't realize that that was in Becker Spine Review because they know that publication and they respect it. So I think these are two really fabulous opportunities in the media that can help us kind of open doors and open communication further. Uh, Sherry, can you share with us uh, a little bit about Becker's Spine Review? Because I don't think, my guess is that most people have never heard of it. Sure. Um, Becker's Spine Review is a very large community of medical doctors that treat the spine. And Becker's is also very well known and branded in a hospital and they do a hospital review as well. So it's the news, what's going on in our communities in regards to hospital association, Becker's does hospitals and spine review. And these are all the people in the communities that are making large media moments happen. And they want the community to know what's going on in treatment, whether it be surgical approaches, whether it be pharmaceutical opportunities, or whether there's, you know, just like everything else, if there's negative news, it'll be pushed through spine review and it'll show fraudulent cases of neurosurgeons doing the wrong thing or orthopedic surgeons not, not doing their, their complete job. So the negative gets posted, but what's really great is this is our first opportunity to be in a, a spine review that really does showcase a lot of the collaborative work that other healthcare professionals within Beckers are doing. And it's highly it's a, it's a very prestigious opportunity for us as chiropractors because they don't get to see this on a regular basis. And I think it'll, it'll show some interest when Becker puts the, the, um, 
the quarterly report together, we're going to be in that as well. So it's not just a one drop, it's being able to promote ourselves and have other doctors in other disciplines see what chiropractic is up to. I, I think that that's uh, great. And I hope that uh, it wasn't overlooked what you just said. Uh, Beckers had asked you to be more of a contributor. This isn't a one shot deal. And for us to be, as a profession, now part of such a prestigious journal, research journal, uh, or review journal, I'm sorry, uh, that puts us in a greater light. And as long, I think the people that, let's just say the circles I live in, on the more conservative end of the profession, can be really happy and comfortable with that, uh, providing that we stick with chiropractic. Uh, I know that you mentioned collaborative effort. I'm all for that. You know, when I'm lecturing, you know, I'm trying to tell everybody about the Adams study that came out in November of 2017. And one of the findings of the Adams study was that people uh, that came to the chiropractor, 64 point five percent of them came because they wanted chiropractic care in conjunction with whatever medical care they were already receiving and that is a very surprising statistic and it's pretty enlightening that doesn't mean that we can't do what we do we can't we don't need to uh, remove ourselves from the principle of chiropractic. We don't have to get rid of the word subluxation. We don't have to do any of those things. We just have to be the chiropractor and get our message out to more people, which is what Sherry is doing through the foundation. And, you know, she reinvigorated my, uh, my spirit about working with the foundation to be able to get more done for our profession because you know you all know what it means to me to change the public perception uh, of chiropractic and they're doing the same exact thing in their way uh, I was shocked to know that they have over 22,000 contributors to the foundation for chiropractic progress my question is are you one of them I sure hope so if not more and more of this can get done. It's all based on money and dedicated people like Sherry McAllister, who is a chiropractor. I hope you all know that. And we need to support the people that are doing the job. Because if you have a better idea, do it and I'll support you. But I don't see anyone doing it except the foundation. So you can complain on the sidelines or you can get in the game and get in it and work with them to make a difference. If you have different suggestions, I'm just gonna share one thing for the naysayers out there. I was one of them, except I still contributed, but I bitched about it. And when I did, I wound up on a telephone conversation with Sherry, with uh, Cuneo, with, Jerry Klum, and I don't even know who else was on there. I don't know why they chose to get on and listen to me bitch to them, but they actually did. And I gave them all kinds of information based on what I thought we needed as a profession. And did they do all of it? Absolutely not. But they're doing things that I never thought of either. And no one's going to be the only one that's going to do everything you think is you. The foundation is what we have. It's our vehicle to get chiropractic out to these reviews, to Forbes, hopefully to more and more publications, uh, not just written, but more uh, on TV and everywhere else. Let's help them. I'm asking you to increase your contribution to the foundation. I'm asking you if you're not contributing, contribute. If you haven't seen this article, and I doubt you have, you'll have an opportunity when we're done, uh, you'll get the notes from today 
just click on the link and go to it, but save that link because you should be emailing it out to every one of your patients and say, hey, read this article. Because if they do, we're going to increase our visibility and our positive impact to a publication like Forbes. And that's what's going to get us more and more of a voice to get more of what you want out there and more of what I want out there, more direct hit. So let's work together. Uh, Sherry, anything else you want to add before we close down? I do. And I want to say that there's plenty of social media companies out there that will do social media for you. But I do want to, I want to be very honest and tell you that the dollars you spend with the foundation are going back to the entire profession. We have 11 billboards that went out on a national campaign for pain relief because of the opioid epidemic. We now have, because of you, the dollars you spend back, go back into the profession. In the, tra- the busiest travel season of the year coming up, we will have an advertisement in every major in-flight magazine going out. We'll be, we'll be hitting train stations, but the whole purpose is, just like you just reiterated, is that this is not just a put your money into a social media company. This is putting your money back into the profession. Supporting the foundation is supporting you. Um, these are effective resources that we're put together for you. And when we have bad media, we want to be on the top of it so that we can get we can either neutralize it or build more positive press for chiropractic. So the dollars that are spent go back into building out the safe and cost effective approach to health. That resource is available for you. Um, as well as the quality and cost effectiveness of chiropractic care. All of these are the opportunity for us to reach our communities, build the positive press and the benefits of chiropractic care. Don't just sink your money into something that doesn't give back to you. We start from the national campaigns and we drill down to the grassroots efforts. And without you, we can't do it. Okay, so thanks so much, Sherry. Uh, As usual, I ran way over what we intended uh, for today, but I think that this is too important uh, not to have a full discussion on. And next week, Sherry will be back on with Dr. Fab Mancini, so please tune into that. And those of you that haven't downloaded our Cairo Secure app, please do it so that you can be notified and or watch uh, these events you know, right on your smartphone. Uh, while you're there, any of you that are not currently with Cairo Secure, please go to our uh, website, kairosecure.com, fill out a quick quote form, at least give us an opportunity. Uh, I know you'll be happy uh, that you did. And I just want to thank everyone for being with us and for staying tuned uh, to all the events we have. And we'll keep bringing you uh, new things each time we come on board. So thanks, everybody. And I hope you all have a great day.